Well, it's um, Donna Girl from Brisbane Red Dog Radio here today, everyone. Um, today we're actually doing a segment on Earthships, and here with me I've got the dude that I'm going to be interviewing. He's from Earthships Australia. How you going? Good, and thanks, thanks for inviting me, Donna. Good, that's no problem. So, why did you decide to start building an Earthship, dude? Well, Donna, in um, February last year, my daughter, who at the time was a university student in architecture, she invited me to a Saturday morning seminar hosted by none other than the father of Earthship, so Mr. Mike Reynolds. Uh, she knew that I had a vague interest in sustainable housing and simplifying your life, and by discarding the stress or, or the clutter, as I call it. So this, this, this lecture was like a dream. It was really like a, a velvet fog. It just hung on every word and I came out totally inspired. Great, yeah. So did you have any previous building experience before taking on the Airship project? No, absolutely no, no, no interest at all. I mean, I've been an office worker all my life and there is a price to pay for that lifestyle, by the way, this working in front of computer screens and downing multiple cups of coffee, there's a bit of a price tag to pay for that, <laughs> but I've always had a vague attraction to doing something physical and you know, creating something with my hands, but maybe not doing maintenance on my old Queenslander and Cooperoo, like the painting and all of that, but you know, something starting something from scratch, and there is something certainly very pure and almost um, romantic in a way about the Earthship, because yeah, you know, it's such a simple build. It, 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 there's a beauty to it, in my opinion, anyway. And um, and uh, yeah, and suddenly, you know, construction knowledge is not the domain of you know tradespeople. Mm. Yeah, you know, in that way, it's it's quite river. It's like revolution in a way. Yeah, and you think that earthships are symbolic of the change that the world has to go through. Well, yeah, well, I, I don't want to sound like, yeah, I'm not in the business of sounding like a dooms, doomsayer, but I, I do think there is a, a very turbulent time coming to us on, on the financial front. Um, I believe um, Australia is, is a blessed country, but I think I uh, would be naive to, to think that we're immune from the run-of-the-mill, hardcore financial problems that the rest of the world has to face. Um, housing affordability, uh, mortgage repayments, money, jobs. Um, yeah, this next generation of Aussies coming through, they're going to be right in the right in the thick of it, I think. Right. Yeah. So, can we maybe talk talk a little bit more about the con your concern about the new generation coming through? Yeah. Well, I mean, I in my website, I mean that. Punters would know that I've got a uh, three children of my own, so I do have sort of an investment for this generation coming through. And in my mind, the mathematics, um, for what I've observed anyway, just don't add up. Uh, you've got university debt, um, like I just mentioned the cost of housing, you've got limited jobs, limited paycheck, you've got a myriad of costs which are coming out of the, the woodwork now. and. Yeah, the, the dollar grabbing corporate sector you know, seem obsessed with their profit and loss. So for a young person coming through, I, I think they've got it all to do. And yeah, a life should be about living. And should, and I don't think um, yeah, it should be it should be a beautiful experience, not a tough one. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Um, so issues like lack of jobs, housing, the environment, mental health. Um, it sounds like you think that these are all related in some way. I think Australians and, and the lion's share of the Western world has equated um, uh, money to success somehow and they've equated money to happiness. Um, getting the right job, getting the right paycheck, getting the right car, getting the right partner, getting the right house. It's it's all this getting, getting, getting. It's 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 no it's no surety for happiness at all. In my website, I use this word about being on a quest, and it's more so. It's more than just about building an earthship. It's about promoting some dude ideas about the world um, in Lifeline and get people who say, "Oh, yeah, it's it's good that you're doing your bit for the community on the phones and that and." 
and I come back and say, no, I'm not doing this you know, for you. I'm doing this you know, I'm on the phone for me because mm. it's a tremendous um, learning experience and, um, and it fuels you know, a lot of my ideas, a lot of the scribblings on my website. Um, so, yeah, so the ultimate motivation is, is for, for self. It's not particularly for helping any, any particular person out, although if people do like it, then that, yeah, that's fine as well. Mm, okay, yeah. So, um, around the mental health issue, you think that it'll be increasingly, it, it'll, it will increase, increasingly become a bigger issue in the future? Well, it's, it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be the number one debilitating illness by 2020 in Australia. I'm not too yeah. sure if that's true or not, but I'm, it must be up there already. Cause well, you're hearing a lot more about it on the news and in the media. It's, it's, it's big. It is. Uh, and there's a lot, and also there's that, that aspect of, um, yeah, the GPs and the mental health professionals themselves don't really understand, you know, what's driving it. That, that, they really are grabbing at straws. Not really, not that I have all the answers myself, but um, I know it's it's nothing that you can just you know prescribe with a magic pill and that's going to solve all your problems for you. Okay, so um, around the, your your website, I um, I did some background reading. Um, there are some bits bits there that I would like to comment on um, the quiet earth and how. How that relates to what you call the dude's personal odyssey? Oh, you have been looking it up, Donna. That's good. Old, um, yeah. Previously, I mentioned this word self before, and and I know it sounds kind of me, 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 and selfish in a way. But what I'm really talking about is the complete self, and where one realizes that there is much more to to yourself than a person than just mind and body. So, but so there's also the spirit component, and the energy. Uh, connecting um, within yourself and just realizing that you are part of this this living world and from, from speaking from my own experience I, I I'm connect the best when I'm in that solitude moment with nature and I think nature is probably the um, yeah best expression of, of that spirit world that I talk but mm. it's a, it's an, um, but I think um, the way things are we're just Ma- we've managed to lose contact with that a bit. Yeah, yeah, I, see. I hear where you're coming from. So when I when I talk about the dude's personal odyssey, there's always been key sort of decisions, like a crossroads point, and I've always used that solitude to find, yeah, you know, which way, which which path to take. And yeah, people having an awareness of, of the of the balance within themselves and trying to, um, yeah. You're making a choice of what you know, what sort of person they want to be. That do they want to live out somebody else's life, or do they want to be more true to what I call their authentic self? That's not me, by the way. That's Doctor Phil. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, gotta love Doctor Phil. <laughs> well, so um, in, in summary, what what else would you would you like to add? Yeah, well, well, in summary, one thing I haven't mentioned is the 60s, and punters of the website will know that I talk about the 60s a lot, and I'm pretty sure Mike Reynolds would not mind me saying that I think Earthships are a way inspired by the 60s, which was again another a time of turbulence where where um, people were, you know, the chat, a lot of the change that I've been talking about came from the people themselves. You know, they weren't relying on government or organisations. Um, so it was, it was almost like um, necessity being the mother of invention. So there was a lot of creative energy. Um, the 60s was, a, you know, free, the, the, the amount of stuff that came out of that time, like um, freedoms for people, like forget about race and you know, what about just, just between the sexes, like women, you know, instead of being seen with, you know, you know dressed up as rabbits with bunny ears and stuff, you know, suddenly... Yeah, there were, I, I think there was. Um, uh, yeah, we, they st- they had started having talk about real equality, about yeah you know, being able to express yourself as a, a person, and then I think that sort of yeah you know, the expression I like to use is yeah you know, people being seen as hearts and souls rather than skirts and trousers. Right. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> but um. uh, yeah, but it, it, I think it's all related. Uh, in a sense, to living simply and uh, living, living, living the life that a lot of people probably deserve and think that they can't 
uh, quite get to, mm. but I think earthships are a, a, an alternate pathway to possibly get to where they want to go. So I think all that's, as I say, it's a lot of that's, a lot of the things I've been talking about are all related. So thanks very much for your time today, dude. It's been great talking to you. Um, yes, thanks. Thank you, Donna. This is um, Donna Girl from Brisbane Red Dog Radio signing out. And this is Dude from Earthship Australia saying bye, bye for, for now. now. <laughs>